Hey, what's up, you guys? This is Rob from A Gay Guy Plays, and today we're about ready to burst when we take a look at the new Arcwing primary, the Velocitus. Okay, so I'm gonna be straightforward with you. I scripted out this review before the most recent patch, and my feelings on this weapon weren't all too hot. After reading the patch notes, there didn't seem to be any huge sweeping changes that were made, so I tweaked the things I needed to tweak and proceeded to finish this one off. However, after a slight bout of writer's block, I figured a few more runs with the Velocitus would get the juices flowing. And let me tell you, whatever the fuck they really did to this has made it pretty damn good now. So you can pick up the Velocitus in the Tenno Lab in the Clan Dojo after you've completed the appropriate research. Its components, however, have been reported to drop in the Arcwing extermination mission on Mars and Venus. But we're all about options here, so for our wallet warriors, you can always pick it up pre-built in the market along with the weapon slot and catalyst for 200 plat. Now its base damage is a bit interesting, as it's currently the only ranged weapon in game that innately does magnetic damage. It does great against shielding and doesn't suffer any real resistances in arcwing missions, as there are currently no alloy armored troops. It also frees up electric and cold mods, allowing you to mod for other elemental combos, like corrosive which currently seems to be the best elemental combo in any arcwing mission. So, for transparency's sake, the Velocitus is basically the Arcwing version of the Lanka, minus the Sniper Zoom. At full charge, it deals a heavy chunk of damage to your target, causing them to explode and deal additional damage in a small area of effect. Much like the Lanka, you can fire this off before it finishes charging, but will only do approximately one-third of the damage listed in your arsenal. Now, to be frank with you, its unmodded charge time hurts, but once you toss on a fully ranked automatic trigger, it becomes much more usable. As for its supplemental stats, it sports a respectable 25% base crit chance and status chance, as well as a decent 2 times crit multiplier. The only issue that I really have here is the fact that the Arcwing mods are a bit neutered as compared to their standard primary and secondary mods. Meaning that with the current mods available to us, crit chance on this will max out at 35%, while status chance will max out at 40%. Now, the biggest issue that I had with this weapon is the fact that it is not hit scan. With long range single target weapons like the Velocitus, the last thing that you want to do is miss and give your enemies an opportunity to swarm you. Sniper style weapons are all about thinning down the crowd before they get the chance to engage, and the fact that you're also being forced to adjust for lead time in a third plane makes it all the more difficult to land those shots. Add in charge time before you can fire off the next round and missing becomes even more painful. However, I have noticed that after the patch, pinpoint shots from across the map still have a decent chance to hit. In addition, due to the Velocitus' stopping power, I've been able to defend towers from other captured points on the map. So regardless of whether I like it or not, it seems that making it projectile based may have been the trade off for so much power. Now speaking of trade offs, can we talk? Okay, I understand that trade-offs are the way the universe keeps things in check. You get really good damage, but you gotta charge it. You get decent crit chance, but the mods for it aren't all that amazing. Now, while compromise is important, sometimes you have to know where to draw the line. It's kind of like finding out that super hot guy who's got his own place, has his own car and pays his bills on time, actually does amateur porn. And not very good amateur porn at that. Or even worse, the really sweet, super thoughtful, well-dressed new love interest in your life is extremely attached to his mama. In fact, as an adult, he still willingly chooses to live with his mom and has plans to move into the house down the street when he does finally leave home. I know, he might as well be sane, right? And that's a pretty accurate representation of how I feel about most long-range projectile weapons. There needs to be a damn good trade-off if I choose to use it over something else. Because honestly, if you plan on eating food in my bed, you better be able to drill me into the next goddamn century. But seriously, don't fucking eat in my bed, that's just wrong. Alrighty, habitual predilections aside, let's get back to the quick draw. All in all, the Velocitus has the potential to deal an insane amount of damage, but can be a bit tricky to use. A charge time and a lack of hit scan are a huge pain in the ass. The bad kind, just in case I needed to clarify. And while its supplemental stats mod halfway decently, it doesn't have any innate polarities to help with it along the way. Now, keeping all of this in mind, I still really do enjoy the Velocitus. There's a sick joy I feel when I'm able to snipe targets that I can barely see on my screen. And while the AoE is fairly small, it always brings a smile to my face when I'm able to take down clustered targets with a single shot. So I guess the most important thing is, regardless of whether it's a couple or just one solo, there's nothing better than watching as each one of them goes down. 
So thank you all for watching another episode of The Quick Draw. I'll toss up a couple links just in case you missed my rundowns on the Odonata and the Elytron. Now, don't forget to do the thing that I ask you to do at the end of every one of these, and as always, stay tuned for more Mile High action here at A Gay Guy Plays. Uh, what did you just say? Oh no, I'm gonna need to rewind that shit. Holy fuck. <laughs>